We got into superconductors because we were at a conference. Here we were already in making high magnetic fields. And there were very, very few other companies in the world making high magnetic fields, almost none. And we were, there we were making, I agree, only about one magnet a year, these big, big copper ones. And we went to a conference in MIT and Martin had to give a paper on the latest development magnets he, that he had done. And um, that, at that conference, superconductors really arrived. They'd been working on them for a, for a few months in America and getting a bit more and more excited. And we'd heard little snippets of news about them. But it was at that conference, it suddenly became clear that the future for high magnetic fields lay with superconductors. And we decided that night on the New York subway to, to try this new technology. So we jumped in so, uh, into this, we, knowing nothing about, nothing about cryogenics virtually. And um, the, the Clarendon knew quite a lot. And um, it, it grew from there because as soon as we got back to England, we ordered a pound of this stuff and wound, Martin wound this magnet. Before superconductors, when you needed a lot of power to make the same magnetic field, in the Clarendon lab where I used to work, uh, in the winter, when the, we had a 20 megawatt power supply in Oxford, it was not on the national grid then, we had a 20 megawatt generator in the power station down the, uh, power station down the other railway station, and um, one was strictly limited in how much power you could take out of that. And particularly in the winter when it was cold and there was a lot of heating on everywhere. We used to be able to work from 7 o'clock at night till 7 o'clock in the morning. Now with superconductors we don't take any power worth uh, counting off the system. And uh, it just made life uh, uh, research people in physics so much easier. Being able to do it day and night with no big power in. Since superconductors have come you have the materials through which electricity can flow without any resistance. So you can have a high magnetic field when you're simply using a, something like a car battery or nowadays a more sophisticated small electronic power supply. So you finish up with magnets like this which can produce quite a high magnetic field in the middle using a relatively small power supply as long as it's kept cold. So this, I hold it in my hands now, but this um, is supported on these three hooks, in fact, by supports from down in the middle of a big container full of liquid helium. And we put it in the New Scientist, a little paragraph of the New Scientist. And it was really a case of people beating the track, track to our door, because lots of people wanted to do research in high magnetic fields. And they couldn't afford the huge setups that they were needed for these, these bigger copper magnets. And, um, so we ordered, we got orders by that Christmas, we, I know, it was in, in about April you wound it yes. and we put it in the New Scientist. By sure. Christmas we had about a, a dozen inquiries and at least five orders and we ordered a five pounds of superconductor which was very expensive then and blow me it was not nearly as good as the first lot. If, if this lot had been as bad as that lot we might not be here today because... It was just luck, the first hundred feet or so, hundred metres of superconductor work perfectly first time. Oh, that I think, but still.